People are more likely to remember how we're going to finish than how we started. What a beautiful mess I was, right? Tracing the contours of the world, my head spinning, wondering, where is my place in all of this? As my flight descended into Lima, Peru, I exhaled. I began navigating my way across the streets. Maybe if my taxi wove me to my hostel in Miraflores, I could gather myself just in time before Alyssa arrived. I was excited to see her and share the incredible food I'd heard about in Peru. I had my travel buddy back, and we had lots to accomplish. We finally got to our end destination of Cusco. High in the Andes, over 11,000 feet in the air, this former capital of the Incan Empire had monuments at every turn. Cusco is a small city, only about 400,000 people, but it's heavily trafficked with tourists from all over the world, coming to see the most famous Machu Picchu. Each street had new places to explore. The central main plaza, Plaza de Armas, was where you'd find most of the tours that were leading to the outskirts. The people of Cusco are so kind and gentle, with a very calm tranquility about them. A hardworking community, especially those within agriculture, I'd later learn. Still a majority of them work within the tourism industry. Their styles of clothes are unique. The textiles of Peru were amazing. Their super soft texture, often made of llama wool, matched with their vibrant colors of natural dyes, fascinated both Alyssa and I. It was all very interesting, except I was more focused on better understanding the agricultural of the region. Incans have legendary history and their agricultural science and techniques is what drove their society for thousands of years. Tiered farm plots drape across entire mountainsides. It was incredible to see how they managed this land. The rugged climate and the high altitudes were things that they'd had to test constantly for hundreds of years, learning little techniques about how to be able to spread water extreme amounts of distances to reach their crops. My favorite of these hillsides actually wasn't a botanical farming at all, but rather salt cultivation. The Salinera of Maras is over 3,000 pools a natural spring of salt water drains down through this crevasse and fills this hillside at nearly 12,500 feet. That's nearly two and a half miles above sea level. Machu Picchu is the real deal, true bucket list type shit that I'm unable to express even the true magnitude of. Truly, it was the capstone of some incredible years Alyssa and I had had traveling together. I made my way back to Cusco, alone this time. Welcome to Cusco. I began scouring the markets each day, eating at the local food stalls, rubbing elbows, trying to make connections with farmers. Peru is not just potatoes. Sure, there are thousands of potatoes, but I wanted to understand how quinoa went from locally domesticated product for thousands of years in Peru to all of a sudden an international sensation overnight. More importantly, how is this impacting the local culture? In the last 25 years, quinoa production in Peru has increased by over 1,800%. However, this wealth is not helping the community overall. In many ways, it's creating massive health issues, as the nutritious staple of their diet has become increasingly exported. It was a terrible flip-flop to see, but I had to find out more, so I was going to leave Cusco. The farm that I was seeking out was ran by two sisters who maintained it with their four children. I would be there to learn about the process of growing and cultivating quinoa. The quinoa fields flowed in beautiful arrays of colors. Thick clumpy buds held the masses of these tiny coveted grains.
Each morning, rising with the sun, we take the cows out to the pasture before returning to navigate the next step of the cultivation process. After the stalks reach adequate size, they're cut down to dry in the sun across the field. Eventually, the stalks are hauled into one central spot where we sat crushing them by hand. It was incredible to see how accurate these older women could be with this process, having done it for decades now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> must be <Anakin. laughs> <laughs> see, un, un. Un Eventually, when dozens of pounds of quinoa are collected, they're bagged and taken into the markets. I was truly in a place that many of my friends might be completely unable to comprehend how life in these mud adobe huts existed. On the equivalence of maybe 30 US dollars a week, this was for a family of six. With this local family, I shared a watya. It's a traditional Incan method of cooking where you're encapsulating all the ingredients underground and then packing dirt on top of it with hot stones and coals buried deep beneath. It's an underground oven, essentially. The lunch was of roasted potatoes and fava beans. I dusted the dirt off from each of them as I'd enjoy small bites. The grandmother had made this. I think she was 90 years old. And as I tried to get the recipe from her, I realized that everything was being lost in translation. I had to slip away before the sun came up. With the stars still overhead, I knew I was leaving a place that would stick with me forever. What more did I need? I had my big bag of quinoa and I was heading back into the kitchen because I figured it was time to show you which recipes best represented my time here in Cusco. The first recipe I worked with was pesque de quinoa. Pesque de quinoa is much like a risotto, but it's using quinoa as the actual rice rather than arborio rice, as they do in Italy. It's quite simple, it's just like cooking quinoa, but at the end, you're mixing in butter, condensed milk, and cheese. You get a nice creamy consistency that eventually I felt and found from the people I was staying with, it's best served with a fried egg on top. Breakfast or late night snacks or middle of the day, this meal works all the time. Another fascination I had was with soup. Soup is extremely popular in Peru from what I found, but I wanted to make a really rich, robust quinoa soup. I took nearly a dozen different ingredients and flavors, kale, lima beans, serrano peppers, carrots, multiple potatoes. I cut up the chicken and mixed it with a nice variety of spices that I felt would go well with all of these. You can find those in the recipes. But as I let it marinate, I seared the chicken in a nice hot pan and began slowly building the flavors as you do with soup. Understanding the cook times of different ingredients is super important when you're putting all the ingredients together. As my soup pot hit a boil and began reaching the brim of the pot, it was just perfect and ready. I truly fell in love with soups in Cusco. Feel free to top the soup off with a little bit of cheese for that extra creamy goodness. The next two recipes are great together. I did a sweet potato quinoa by blending up a very common ingredient, that being sweet potatoes, that I found through Peru. They tend to just chunk it into different entrees, but I, in this case, grated it, cooked it down, and then blended it as I mixed it back in with a variety of different other ingredients and the cooked quinoa I'd made earlier. Lomo Sotado is one of the most popular recipes that you'll find through Peru. Start off by making the Lomo Sotado sauce by mixing together hot sauce and bell peppers. To blanch a tomato, you score the bottom with a small little X and take the core out of it, and then drop it into boiling water for about 45 seconds, maybe a minute, but immediately drop it back into ice cold water. This will allow the skin of the tomato to peel right off nice and smooth. Then in a pan that's smoking hot, I added the beef and slowly cooked it. 
seasoning it as it cooked, and then pulling it off immediately. I threw the onion in afterwards to pick up a lot of the flavor and as, as well poured the juices of the beef in to allow some color to form. As the french fries bake, you just slowly start working it all back together, adding in the tomatoes and beef again, and then once you have extra crispy, very important to have extra crispy french fries that will hold up to the nice, soggy consistency of this stir fry. It's delicious. You can serve this on the side of the sweet potato quinoa and have a wonderful meal that feeds many people. My time here in Cusco had been very unique. Some parts with Alyssa, tough, realizing our paths were starting to separate. Other parts were fascinating as I started to immerse myself into the local cultures and understand what their life was like in very rural, poor parts of the world. I loved all the people I found and I was curious about what this next phase of the journey would be. As I was nearing my last episode, I knew at least I'd seen this through and found an incredible journey that had taken me from all ends of the spectrum in the culinary world. I grabbed my backpack and set off. Aroma Ventures was going to its final location, 